Hello and welcome. This is Roofmonger. And my friends, this is my Jacko Tips and Tricks Guide. So, thing to say just before anything else, every character in Guilty Gear Strive is pretty different from every other character, but Jacko is even more different from the rest of the cast. Due to her reliance on her minions and just uh, that game plan being what it is, things are pretty different. But that said, we're still going to be covering a wide variety of topics. We'll be talking a lot about minions as well. And of course, this being a longer video, everything will be timestamped. So just skip to whatever sounds interesting to you. That all said, let's start with it. So the first thing to talk about here, Minions 101 as it were, we got to talk about the absolute basics and that's summoning a minion. Because none of Jacko's gameplay works without a minion. So all it is is quarter circle forward and the punch button. And you have a minion in play. In fact, you can have two minions and even three minions in play. They don't last forever. They will eventually despawn, as you can see, right? So you got to work with them while you got them, because otherwise, well, then you don't have anything to work with. The move, as it stands, when you do it, will place the minion directly in front of you. And this is for however many it'll be, right? If there is multiple minions, it'll displace the first one back of the line. And if you happen to be touching the enemy, and they are not in the corner specifically, it will place the minion behind them. You might notice here, if you look down here, Jacko has her own unique bar, and that is directly tied to the minions. You need a full bar to place a minion. So with three bars, you can place three. Past that, you can't do anything else. You can't place additional. So three is the max. But if you have not enough meter, you need at least two meters to put two, three meters to put three, so on and so forth. You can only place as many as you have. Now, when you have an active minion out, you'll see this gray bar. This gray bar will be consumed whenever you do a minion ability. Now, just so you know, we'll talk about the abilities more in a second, but that is the purpose of the gray bar for the most part. Uh, it just lets you know this bar is tied to a minion and once it's used up, then it's just gone forever rather than gray. One of the most important things to note about minions is any button will send them flying. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about this later on in the video, but that's just one of the key things. And if minions happen to touch each other, they will bounce off each other. So you can create a little bit of uh, conga lines, depending on how things are going. When a minion is placed, you can pick it back up by hitting down and punch. And it will just pick it up above your head. Now, if you were to summon the minion and you want to hold it while summoned, just do your basic summon, but instead hold the punch button and it'll summon with you holding it. And while you're holding it, you can run around pretty easy, please. You can jump, you can double jump, all that kind of stuff. You can air dash. All your movement options for the most part still are in place, other than the fact that you're holding it. Now, once you're holding a minion, hitting forward and any attack button will toss the poor little guy. So you can pick him up and re-toss him, all that kind of stuff. But if a minion is in your hands, you only have two options to toss them or to drop them. And to drop a minion, all you have to do is hit the dust button. So it can be on the ground, it can be in the air, it can be like uh, in the middle of an air dash. Whenever you hit the dust button, you will drop whatever minion you're holding. And this can be very important for combos and setups. So now we know about the basics of the minions, right? Summoning, knocking them around, the basics, the, the baby basics. Now let's talk about some more advanced stuff because there's a lot of commands they have and also super moves that are unique to them. So first up here, first command, quarter circle back and A. This is the recall command. And when you have the recall command out, it just basically desummons every single one of your minions and it'll refund you their cost. So if you're at mercy of waiting for the bar to drain, this will basically make that a lot easier on you. Once again, that's quarter circle back and the punch button. Our next command, quarter circle back and slash button, is the shield command. So when you have this out here, as always, you'll need minions out. They'll perform a little bit of a shield. Now here's the thing about that. The shield command will stop pretty much near every attack dead in its tracks. So Soul's trying to go for his uppercut here, right? Which normally would crush a minion. However, when we have the shield up, stops him dead and puts him in a little bit of a guard break kind of position. 
Now, the thing is, it'll stop all normals. It'll stop all specials. However, this will not stop super moves. So he will blow through. It could be Saul. It could be any character. If they are doing their super move, it will just completely blow through the minion shield. They don't have a chance, right? So that's the one thing. If they're burning meter, then the minion shield is just not good enough. Now, one thing to note here. Every separate minion can have a separate shield, right? So no matter where they are on the screen relative to you, they'll have their shield. You can also have a shield while it's placed on you. The shield will only be effective directly above your head, sure, but it is just something to keep in mind. Our third command is last resort. Now when this happens here, you'll see the countdown happen and the minion will explode. And this is useful for pressure, block strings, all that kind of stuff. One very big thing to note is you are not immune to this explosion. It will hit you just as much as it will hit the enemy. So just keep that in mind. You are equally fair game. Now, just like the enemy, you are allowed to block, right? So it's not like it's guaranteed or unblockable or whatever. But just keep in mind, it benefits you very little to be beside a minion that's going to self-destruct. And once again here, no matter where the various minions are on the screen, they will all start self-destructing. And you can bounce them into each other, and they'll still, wherever they lie up when the countdown's over, that is where they will self-destruct. And our final command, quarter circle back and kick, is the attack command. So summon a minion, and wherever they happen to be, they'll go for an attack. Now the big thing to note about this attack is if it hits the enemy, it will launch them up. So you as Jacko, you can directly follow up and combo after the fact. Uh, it's very good for pressure, very good for block strings, very good for just about everything. The only downside is, uh, since it is tied to your meter, you can't do it forever. Once you're out of meter, you're out of options. You can only do it as long as you have at least one bar. A uh, big thing to note here is while you are holding a minion, all these commands have shortcuts. No longer is it quarter circle back, punch, kick, slash, heavy slash. Uh, you can still do it, but it also works simply as back. So while you're holding it, the input gets easier. You can hit back punch. You can hit back kick. That's an attack, as you can see right here. And that will launch the enemy too, as well, even though they're very high up. Uh, if you're so committed to going out in style, hit back heavy slash, and you can literally uh, carry your bomb to them directly in style, right? But whatever it is, as long as you're holding a minion, if you just hit back in the button, it'll be a shortcut. Doesn't work while the minions are out. Doesn't work that way, right? But only while you're holding it. But just keep in mind, it's just to save you a little bit of inputs. Now there is two super moves associated with the minions. The motion is the same, it's just a button press. So double quarter circle forward, S, which will turn all the minions into defensive dynamos. As you can see here, like no matter how much soul hits them, at least until it runs out, they can't go away. Now, obviously, this is not a forever kind of buff, right? But as long as it's up, the minions, they are there to stay, meaning uh, Jacko can bounce them around quite a bit, and you don't got to worry too much about them going away or just being beat out or that kind of stuff. The other one, same motion. So quarter circle forward, quarter circle forward, heavy slash. And instead, what happens here is your gauge refills super fast. So you can basically just spam attacks over and over and over while it's up. Now, both of these only last for a fairly short amount of time, to be fair. But while it's up, man, like, you get a level of offense that you just normally can't otherwise pull off. It is very strong for both of them. It'll uh, be basically which one's more valuable to you. If you're more mid-screen and trying to control the screen, the defensive one is more valuable. But if you got the, their back against the wall and you're just looking to crush them, uh, you will get, at bare minimum, a lot of chip damage from the one that lets them regenerate their meter very fast. Now, let's talk a very important part of the everything here. The glue that holds a lot of this together. So now we know about minion summoning. We know all about the fancy things we can do in minions. But there's something you gotta do to the minion. And that is put them down and put a boot right to the back of their head because we're gonna be talking about the boot. This is her only special move that is not like minion related in some way, right? 
Uh, there's a, another super that's not minion related, but this is our only special move that is not related to minions. Although, you will be using it in conjunction with minions most of the time anyways. So this is just quarter circle forward kick. In and of itself, it is not terribly impressive. It doesn't exactly do a lot of damage. It knocks people far away, which is cool. Uh, it also causes a wall bounce in the corner, depending on what you're doing, which is also cool. But the main use is with the minions. So first off here, let's just look at a damage comparison. Now, normally, when you bounce around a minion, uh, it will always do 30 damage. It's doing 29 against Soul, because Soul has more defense, but it'll always do 30 damage, right? Uh, and this is however you want to use the minion. If you want to get tricky and all that kind of stuff, it's always 30. However, give the minion the boot, and then it'll be 50 damage. Less because it's against Soul right now. But as you can see, regardless, this number is simply not as high as that number, right? The boot gives you more damage. You can even see if you're from further away, there's even a bit of an animation change. As it has like a little bit of a rocket effect applied to it. And also minions, if hit by the boot and to another minion, so there's a little bit of a conga effect here, they will also do more damage. So that is another fun little thing. So uh, the boot itself will do 44 against soul, 50 normally. And if we have two minions out and we boot one into the other, all of a sudden you see the damage gets boosted, right? Now, if you do the true conga line, of all three, it'll still only have the same damage buff of if you just bounce the one. But still, booting around the minions gives you more damage and otherwise tossing them around in any other way. Another very important thing to know is the boot is special and normal cancelable. So if we have the enemy here and we'll just set them to block, for example, right? So they're going to block everything. Even if they block, we can still special cancel into our minion so the move the boot itself is not terribly safe on block so going to a minion is a better idea most of the time this stuff we'll talk about later on as well but at the very least you can do this go into minion and also since you're allowed to hold the button you can go with that into minion hold as well and just you know run or walk away or whatever right so that's cool so you can always special cancel into the minion no matter what on hit or on block and you can do all sorts of stuff, you know, by like continuing, you know, minion offense, all that kind of stuff. So this technique is already pretty good. You can go into minions, but you can also go into minion commands. So after the boot, you're immediately allowed to cancel into any minion command you want. So it could be self-destruct, it could be uh, attack, it could be whatever you want it to be. But it lets you basically just keep chaining your offense together, 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 again, and again, and again. As long as you have minion gauge to work with, right? So it's very important besides just booting around minions, which is also very good, don't get me wrong, right? Uh, but in terms of pressure and combos, it is integral to know this fact. Now, finally, uh, we do have one more super to talk about, one that isn't tied to the minions, and that is her Elysian Grab. So this move is a true command grab. You cannot block it uh, just like any other command grab, right? No teching, no nothing. The thing to note here is this. Unlike other big command grabs, you can jump after the flash, right? So if you see this coming and you're not otherwise in a combo or whatever, it's literally simple as holding up to escape. So you can't use it as a command grab for pressure in that way. Uh, however, you can still use it just fine in combos. And the fun thing about using it in combos is it's indeed a wall-breaking move. So if you use it in long combo, yeah, it'll scale, but it does break the wall, unlike a lot of other command grabs in the game. So if you're looking for a wall break, this is your best chance for big damage, because you'll get your damage. And keep in mind, too, you can do it off just basically anything, right? Any hit confirm, you can get it in the corner. And less hits means higher damage and much better scaling, right? Uh, so it's very good for that, and it's a good way to basically end just about any combo if you happen to have the meter to spare. Now, let's talk notable normals for Jacko. First up here, very basic button, but just Stand Slash. Stand Slash is a pretty decent poke, 
and what it is is 11 frame startup. Most pokes like this in the game tend to be 12 frame startup. So it's just basically one frame faster, right? And also if we take a step backwards, it'll still connect. The range is actually pretty dang good on this move. You go too far back, it's gonna whiff, right? But even a step back from round one start, it'll still connect. So it's got a little bit more range than the typical move like this. And it's also just about a frame faster than the typical move like this. So all in all, just a solid poke. Now you sadly don't get too much off of it, but at the bare minimum, you can just poke into like summon minion and you'll be good to go, right? It's not really punishable at any specific range. Uh, if you want to hold the minion, you can just walk off with it right away, right? Like it just needs to be what it is. And that is a simple poke. Next up, we got to talk jumping heavy slash, this guy here. Now on paper, like as you can see, when it just hits normally, it doesn't look like much, right? Like it's it's kind of whatever. Like jump ass basically has a better hitbox all in all. If you want to use it the quote unquote normal way. But when you want to use it as a cross up, this is where it gets special because it's a double hitter only as a cross up. When you use it up front normally, it doesn't work because the back leg has a hitbox. So the back leg when using it normally, well, it simply cannot connect, right? But when using it as a cross up, the back leg can connect and then all of a sudden it makes it a double hitter. So this at bare minimum, if you want to use it as a cross up, oh, very easy hit confirm, right? For a Roman cancel, because you can easily visibly see both hit happen and then go into RC and then go into whatever else you want to go into. Uh, but it just makes it a very strong cross up tool as you have a good visual confirmation you're going to get it. Plus, you know, once again, double hits, more damage, all that kind of stuff. And it's just easy. It's kind of fire and forget. You don't really need to space it. As long as you know you're going over the enemy's head, it's gonna work. And in conjunction with other stuff, which we'll talk about later in this video, it is the foundation of a very, very strong 50-50 coin flip mix-up game. Now, Notable Normal, not because it's that great, but just because it is the textbook definition of Notable, is Jump Dust, because Jump Dust is actually a fireball. Now, it's a very, very low damage fireball, you're not exactly gonna be zoning people out with this either because it's pretty slow start up here. Uh, like, but it is just a fireball and it's a fireball from an amazing angle, right? Uh, this is a great way to control space, which is a big part of the character. And also if you happen to have a minion out, it will bounce your minions around just FYI. It's definitely not something to build your game plan totally around, but as something to do every now and then, or as an additional way to help bounce your minions around while you're already airborne, it is pretty interesting. And the final notable normal I want to talk about is forward HS. This is a command normal here. Now up close, it's a double hitter. So combo structure in the corner, all that kind of stuff works great. By itself, it's a long range poke. Now the thing is, it's really dependent which character you're fighting here. So say we take like one little step back, try to hit soul. It's gonna go clear over his head, right? However, say we try a different character, someone who's a little bit bigger than soul, right? So Potemkin, Faust, Nagoriyuki, any of the big characters, Gold Lewis. All of a sudden this goes from, you know, interesting thing you wanna use every now and then, uh, you know, double head in a corner to like, this is a valid footsies tool against the bigger characters because they're so big at ranges quote unquote normal characters could never get hit by they will get domed by this now if they're crouching sure whatever but you know at the distance you will use it at there's very little incentive to crouch uh say you're up against a mega fist happy potemkin which is all potemkins i should know very well myself right because why play the game when i can just mega fist right and all of a sudden on top of just hitting them very good this is also the mega fist arc right like the arc he wants to mega fist you at is exactly the arc this stuff will cover. At which point, very easy to get your setup going and toss in like minions around, all that kind of stuff, right? So against the larger characters, this move definitely takes a, a life of its own, right? Uh, it's certainly not infallible. Don't get me wrong, right? Uh, but this is a tool that's very good in specific matchups. Conversely, it can also be bad. Like someone like Giovanna. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. You have to be like 
near touching her for this to actually connect. Like, that's just how this game works, right? Uh, but just keep in mind, it's a decent tool as it stands, right? Also, people are very jumpy. It controls that airspace very well. And against the larger characters, it will make their life a little bit rough. Now, let's go back to our friend, the humble minion. Now, as we talked earlier, you can, like, smack these guys around. They can even bounce off each other, all that kind of stuff, right? But the thing is, sometimes you gotta pull some geometry on this. Because how you hit a minion really changes how the minion goes forward. So if we have, you know, the minion here full screen, the boot will always send a minion full screen no matter what. Let's say we do something like basic punch. Not so much, right? And say we go a little heavier like a command normal, not so much. Uh, even full screen heavy slash. Doesn't work, right? So there are things you got to consider. Now sometimes, you know, well, like, oh, I always want to do the thing that sends them the furthest, right? Well, sometimes that's not the right idea. That's not what you need to be thinking about. Because a boot at this range will get them too, but so will a jab, right? And the jab will hit while you are able to defend yourself and block a lot faster. But regardless, the linear thought process here is exactly that. It's linear, right? What if the enemy, they jump? Well, then you're out of luck, right? Uh, but that can be fixed a little bit. So say we hit the minion with down slash, which goes straight up. That's uh, also a good anti-air button, by the way. It'll launch the enemy, well, just straight up. And that's the kind of stuff we need to think about. Alternate forms of attack. Alternate ways to control the screen. Uh, keep in mind, too, when you're holding the minion here, if you hit dust, you drop them wherever they are. So say we happen to be in the air and drop them, right? All of a sudden, we can work with some stuff. So say we do exactly this. We jump up in the air, drop them heavy slash. Then all of a sudden it turns them into like kind of a grand aerial projectile, which happens to cover a little bit more space a little faster than just tossing them. And it doesn't have that additional high up arc, right? It'll basically be more direct delivery system to the enemy. So that's interesting. But what if we use jump slash instead? So if we use jump slash instead, all of a sudden we smack them down to the ground, directly to the ground, and then they bounce on the way up. And that effectively controls a smaller portion of the screen, sure, but more of that portion of the screen. It won't go full screen, but it will cover directly below you. And if for whatever reason it doesn't connect, it will then additionally bounce forward and get even more space to control. So if the enemy happens to move into that space or they were jumping around or whatever, like regardless of what it could be, just the act of dropping them and hitting jump slash, it gives us another extra way of controlling the screen with the bounce. Now, thankfully, it's not too complex. Whatever the normal looks like is generally how they'll bounce, right? So if we summon the enemy and hit down heavy slash, it'll spike them down and then bounce them up very high. Versus, you know, we just summon, it'll jab, and that's the direction it'll go, right? So you don't got to think too hard. What it looks like it should be, that is exactly what it will be. Like if you were to hit an enemy with a charged dust, they'll also bounce up, right? Like whatever you think, will work that's how it'll work now during pressure during screen control these things can matter quite a bit so just give an extra thought to not only trying to hit the enemy with the minion but how you're hitting the minion uh if they're not just going to go directly into their face the way they travel can make a very large difference now coming off the previous section where we talked about moving minions around with jacko let's talk with jacko quote unquote zoning so no matter how you toss your minion to the enemy, it could be just as basic as picking up and chucking them yourself. Keep in mind, they can do the attack command wherever they are, whenever they are, right? So something as simple as this, toss, attack command on hit, that's a two hit combo. That's really good, right? So now let's just take it to its logical conclusion, right? So if we toss the minion here and hit some control screen, all of a sudden that's a four hit combo. Yeah, we burned all the bars, sure, but that's not even insignificant damage. That's very workable damage, right? For a full screen hit, that's fine. I would take it. I don't know about you, but I would, right? And now we can think about that. So anytime that the minion bounces off the character or before, but generally you want the bounce off just so we can get more damage in the combo, right? That is an option. So once again here, let's take our boot example. We boot him full screen. 
and we can then follow up with additional attack commands, right? So anytime you yourself are not, you know, near the enemy to follow up with a minion or whatever, right? So effectively, as long as you yourself are not exactly there, but the minion's there to attack, just keep in mind, the attack command follow-up immediately can make this a pretty damaging hit. The minion bot by itself is not too much, but if you toss your minion and get one or two attack commands in there, that starts getting significant. Tossing the minions around can be the game plan in and of itself as long as you got the meter to work with. Because as far as uh, projectiles damage goes, that's pretty high. And also, you know, you can just threaten, like, okay, you condition them. They're going to block to, uh, you know, if they block the first one, they'll block immediately after that. Then you can run up, or then you can delay it, or whatever. There's a lot of mind games out of the fact. But yeah, it's pretty strong. Just keep it in mind. Now, let's talk about making yourself safe. Because a lot of what Jacko has is not safe at all, even a little bit, right? The big boot? That's negative 12 on block. That's not safe. I see a lot of people, a lot of videos, uh, they love the sweep, right? You know, downed us, moves forward, cool, leads to a lot of setups, awesome. That's negative 19 on block. You're definitely dead. And if you try to go for like, uh, you know, sweep in the boot, well, that can beat some characters, some buttons, but say someone has an invincible reversal, you're dead no matter what. There's nothing you can do to make yourself safe here. Uh, I see a lot of people, they try to fish with the sweep into whatever. Uh, if you're fighting someone with an invincible reversal, no matter what, once they block the sweep and they go right into their invincible reversal, there's literally nothing you can do. Cancel in the boot, you get punished. You know, as you see here, if you just let it rock, you get punished. If you want to get cute and go to like minion summon or something, you're going to get punished. In this exact scenario, pretty much everything you're going to do is going to get blown up. Uh, the only thing that will keep you safe is to do the block string of whatever into down dust, summon minion, and immediately do the shield. That is the only real way to keep yourself safe against characters with invincible reversals. So it's cool gimmicky, right? Um, but it's maybe not the most reliable thing. Versus, keep in mind, just close S into down HS into the boot. That is all a true block strength. So you cannot get got for doing this. Now keep in mind, the boot itself also not the safest move in the world, as you can see, punish. You can make it safe when spaced against a lot of characters. Not all characters, but a lot of characters. The boot itself is negative 12, so it's pretty negative. It's less negative, however, if you cancel it into a minion command. Some characters might still be able to punish that, though, the FYI. If you want to go directly into a minion plant, that is safer. And once again, with the pushback, maybe they'll hit your minion, but they won't hit you. But if you do the minion plant and hold specifically, so you do this, and then you hold the minion above your head, that's plus on block. It's not plus a block, it's like plus two, I think, right? But that is plus on block. So at that point, when you're doing whatever string, uh, you can pretty freely, from almost every character, just walk away. Uh, the only way they can really hit you is if they specifically call you out. And then they go forward and try to attack you with whatever they can, right? Uh, but yeah, you can just do that and make it plus. A lot of things into minion hold, specifically, tend to be uh, less negative or even plus on block. That is why our situation earlier catching the DP, uh, we could do our minion shield and it would work, right? So just keep that in mind. Generally speaking, things in the sweep, you're risking a lot. You're risking a lot. Uh, if you do whatever in the sweep, in the boot, you can catch slower buttons. But if anyone has an invincible move, you're probably going to die unless you do the very specific scenario of move into sweep into minion hold into shield. So just keep that in mind, right? Because how you carry yourself in this game with your block string structure is always very important. And uh, you don't want to die. If someone sees this sweep, there is very little incentive for them not to just start mashing buttons. Because at worst, they eat the boot, which is kind of nothing. The boot barely does damage, right? And at best, they're going to tear you in half. So for block string structure, watch the sweeps. Uh, 
close slash into down heavy slash is much safer all around. Yeah, it has less good scenarios if it connects, right? But you don't want to commit to something before you can even tell. And due to the nature of the game, you'd have to commit to the sweep immediately. And uh, that can be bad news bears for you. Now, I want to tell you about the Jacko quote-unquote infinite. Uh, this is borderline gimmick, borderline really good. And I don't know uh, where it's going to land in the end. I guess history will tell us, right? Uh, but this effectively lets you boot your minion forever. Over and over and over and over. So how do we accomplish this? Well, you need a minion, right? And you need to boot that minion in the head. That's step one and step two. Now here's the thing, as you may recall, when you boot a minion, you are allowed to cancel into a special move, right? It could be a nether minion call, it could be, you know, a minion command, whatever it is, right? But there is actually one additional thing you are allowed to cancel into. So when you hit down and punch, this will actually pick up minions, right? And this is one of the things, because the minion pickup portion of this move counts as a special move. So therefore, once you boot a minion, you're allowed to cancel into it. Now you'll pick up exactly nothing because the minion, well, the minion, he's gone, right? <laughs> he just got booted, but it'll let you cancel into the pickup. The thing about this is the pickup, even though it whiffs, is cancelable back into the boot which is cancelable back into the pickup, which is cancelable back into the boot, so on and so forth. So in this scenario here, and this is just mid-screen, right? It basically works till they just get pushed out, right? And then something will fail. That's mid-screen. So it's cool, but it's not that strong mid-screen. But in the corner, where there is no more getting pushed out again, And it just kind of goes like that, right? I'm not going to lie to you. It's uh, very difficult to time. Uh, you need to be at the very specific range where you're just outside of the actual boot range. Don't want the boot to connect. Uh, you want to be roughly around here. It can be a little further out, but roughly around there. And once that is done, once again here, just boot the minion. Try to grab it with down punch. It'll miss because they're not there to be got. And then cancel that down punch immediately into another boot. And as long as the minion never touches the ground, uh, if they touch the ground, they will peace out, right? But as long as they never touch the ground, they will be able to be infinitely kicked into the enemy forever. Once again, very difficult. Practice it at home. Uh, it's literally as simple as this. Place the minion. I say simple, but it's actually hard, right? Uh, then boot, down punch to whiff. And then immediately cancel that down punch into boot, repeat, 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 repeat. Uh, I myself, I don't think I've done better than like seven reps in a row. And I didn't get it on video, so that's why we have less reps in this video. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, but maybe you're just a lot better than me and you can figure it out. But technically, if you're perfect in your machine and your timing's never off, you can effectively infinite the enemy with this technique. Now let's talk some of the more fun aspects of the character. Minion setups. There's a million permutations. I'll show you the basic ones you need to know because frankly, I don't know every single one. There's new ones being discovered every single day, but I'll give you the core mix up you need. Now, how do you get a mix up? Pretty easy, in fact. Uh, one of the basics and best examples is simply throw the enemy. Get a basic throw and you got an immediate 50-50 ready to go. So all you have to do after throw, very simple. Throw the enemy, place minion. That's step one. At that point, we're now ready for step two, which is force them to guess left or right. So after the minion set up here, the first part here, cross up, easy. Just immediately instant air dash and go for our jumping heavy slash. And keep in mind too, double hitter, right? And that's just an example combo, right? Good chunk of damage too. But yeah, it's really that simple. Just do your throw. It's always a hard knockdown. That's the nature of throws in this game. Plant your minion. And if you're going for the cross up, that's one example combo. There's definitely a lot more you can do. 
Don't take that as the Bible, right? But it's a solid example of how to work. And that's your cross up. Now, what if you want to hit the same side? Hitting same side is the exact same setup. The only difference is you, after the instant air dash, immediately go into the minion attack call. That will actually leave you on the exact same side. So the enemy had to block that, the normal side versus compared to the cross up. The distance of you being basically directly on top of their head for the most part, and them having to guess left or right because the cross up will hit one side and the minion attack hall will hit the other side. Basically impossible to visually distinct between the two. And naturally you get combo opportunities as well, right? In this specific scenario, depending on when you hit the buttons, you can push them closer to the corner or keep them same side and then combo into the minion. Now, if you want to keep mix-up potential in the corner, the exact same setup won't work because no matter what, when you air dash, well, you're not exactly crossing them up, right? Uh, you can pressure, and we'll talk about the pressure section in a minute, uh, but if you want to keep the cross-up potential, certain uh, combo strings, like say this basic example here, this will lead to a 50-50 mix-up. And it's effectively the same idea, right? So this is close slash, down heavy slash, into the boot. And then you're just going to do uh, the basic minion call, right? And from there, that steals the corner. And also it hits the minion, right? So that's still a cross up. And the minion gets hit. So you don't even need to do like a minion call. You can just combo directly after the fact. And if you want to do the same setup here, and then right before crossing over, hit the minion attack, that is same side. So the enemy has to block. So even in the corner, we can still get a 50-50. And from there, combo potential in the corner, pretty easy to work with. Now, say you don't want the mix, right? Say you just want pressure. You want them just to hit a button at a bad time, get the counter hit, go from there, right? Equally as valid a choice. And thankfully with Jacko, it works out just much the same. So the enemy here is gonna do uh, their fastest attack as a wake up here, just to show that we can crush it. So after a basic throw, since we used throw as an example before, all you want to do, pick up the minion and chuck it. Simple as that. So it'll get them minion on the other side of them where it's very safe and they can't hit it. Now, as you can see, even though they're waking up with their fastest button here, our stand slash totally crushed it. And if they mash buttons right there, that's easy enough, right? Uh, they get comboed by the minion attack call, they launch, we can combo to whatever we want. But say they don't, right? Say they block. Well, it still leaves us in range for the minion attack call, that's fine. And the thing about the minion attack call, it is wicked plus on block. Uh, I believe it's plus 15 on block just by itself, right? So at that point, well, world's your oyster. You can run up, threaten the grab, run up, hit more buttons. Heck, you can do another minion. Like whatever you dream of, it is now possible, right? So it's not quite a 50-50 like the previous mix up, but it's a basic example to be sure, right? But it is locked down and uh, it just works. It's really as simple as that. Really, you can do this with multiple examples. That's just the basic layer, right? Uh, after the minion toss, you can like run up and like do uh, crouch quick and to sweep into minion attack, right, as well. Uh, the thing is, if you want to do that specifically and you see that beat a wake up attack clean, right? Uh, you do got to do like a little mini dash versus the stand S is more auto timed. But still, like the world's your oyster. You can do whatever you want. From that point, basically just do whatever button, see if you catch them, and then cancel into minion attack. In the corner off a throw, a very easy setup is just do it, minion plant, and then just close S. The close S will whiff because the enemy's not live yet, right? They're not there to be hit just yet, but it'll cause the minion to bounce, and then the minion will hit them super meaty. So you have a guaranteed, no matter what button, unless it's invincible, no matter what button they press is gonna get beat out by the min minion guaranteed, and then from there, just do whatever you want to do, right? Try a dust for an overhead. You obviously got a bevy of low options. You can wait them out uh, for the blocks and try to throw them again. The world's your oyster. You got so much to work with. 
And that is Jacko in a nutshell. This guide honestly provides uh, a pretty base look at the character because this character has so much depth. Just the nature of the minion and everything the minion's about, from hits to combos to setups to mix-ups to everything, there'll be stuff to discover for a long, long time to come. And frankly, it's stuff I just don't know yet because she's very complex. Honestly, for my money, I think she's harder than Zato is. To me, Zato is an easier to understand character than she is. So uh, if you are starting on your Jacko journey, I at the very least hoped this helped you get your feet on the ground, gave you uh, the ideas of how some concepts work and you have some example pressure, some example mix-ups and just understanding of the character as a whole. And all that said, my friends, that is the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Guilty Gear.